To continue our conversation about catalysis, I want to look at a specific example of a reaction under acid-base catalysis, and we're going to see two different modes of acid-base catalysis in this video and the next. The reaction I want to focus on is the reaction of an ester, that's the functional group you see here, specifically that is this CO double bond linked to an alkoxy group, OCH3, the reaction of this ester group with water to form a carboxylic acid, we see that functional group here, and an alcohol. And so on the whole what's happened is the substitution of OH, a hydroxyl group, for OCH3, which now appears in the alcohol. Ester hydrolysis in the absence of a catalyst occurs through a four-step process, and it's very slow for reasons we're about to see. The first step is nucleophilic addition of water, a decent nucleophile, to the electrophilic carbon-oxygen pi bond. The product of this elementary step contains an atom with negative charge, the alkoxide oxygen, and an atom with positive charge, the oxygen of the nucleophilic water that coordinated to the carbonyl carbon. This type of intermediate with positive and negative charges within the same molecule is called a Zwitter ion. And this is formed from neutral reactants, so charge separation has taken place. We've seen previously that this is bad and that steps that involve charge separation like this generally have very high activation energies. This essentially explains why this uncatalyzed hydrolysis reaction is quite slow. From here, a proton transfer takes place. Another mo molecule of water gets involved as a base. Water here is typically used in excess, and the most acidic position in the intermediate is deprotonated. In the next elementary step, a beta elimination takes place with the anionic oxygen kicking off an alkoxide anion, OCH3-. This generates the product carboxylic acid, an alkoxide anion, and that alkoxide anion then reacts extremely rapidly with the hydronium ion that we generated here in this step. Notice that transfer of a proton to water generates H3O+. We're now going to use that H3O+, to protonate this alkoxide to give the product alcohol, HOCH3. So looking at the uncatalyzed mechanism, we see a number of problems. The first nucleophilic addition elementary step involves charge separation, and that's going to be associated with a very high activation barrier, very high barrier to surmount, a very high energy intermediate right here. The problem here is charge separation. This results in extremely high activation energies and very slow chemical reactions. When we add just a little bit of strong acid to this reaction, it occurs much more quickly. And the essence of this effect is that the acid protonates the electrophile, here the ester, turning it into a stronger electrophile. So we go from a neutral ester starting material to an intermediate in which the ester oxygen has been protonated. And this enhances the electrophilicity of the molecule, specifically at this carbon. Consider the resonance structure where we push a pair of electrons in the CO double bond up to oxygen. That makes the oxygen neutral, but the carbon positively charged. That resonance form gains in importance massively when we protonate the oxygen. And so what we're seeing here is the classic action of a Bronsted acid catalyst. Protonation has made the electrophilic substrate, and more specifically the carbonyl carbon within that substrate, a stronger electrophile. Protonation also facilitates the next step, the nucleophilic addition of water to the carbonyl carbon. This is a classic nucleophilic addition to a polarized pi bond elementary step, but notice, in contrast to the uncatalyzed process, we're now transferring positive charge from the positively charged oxygen here to a different positively charged oxygen. There's no more charge separation, and that's because of the proton transfer event, the first step. A proton transfer back to water then generates a neutral intermediate. And here I want to pause and note that all we've done is just the classic pattern of acid catalysis. We put a proton on the electrophile, we did the business, a nucleophilic addition, or AD sub N elementary step, and then we took the proton off to get to this intermediate. That exact same cycle happens again in steps four through six, but the business step is now beta elimination rather than nucleophilic addition. First, we protonate what is going to become the leaving group. Here, the leaving group is going to be the OCH3 fragment. We know that because we see HOCH3 on the product side, right? Proton transfer to that oxygen that's actually going to serve as the nucleophuge, that's going to take a pair of electrons with it, generates a new positively charged intermediate. From here, beta elimination, or the business step, occurs. 
and this beta elimination has been facilitated by that protonation since it turned an alkoxy group, a neutral alkoxy group, into a positive alkoxonium group, which is a much better leaving group than the original neutral structure. The last thing we need to do is deprotonate this intermediate in order to regenerate the catalyst. And in the first proton transfer step up here, step four in the overall mechanism, we generated water. And so water is available to deprotonate this intermediate. This generates the neutral carboxylic acid product, this product here, and regenerates the catalyst. And the catalyst goes on to engage with another molecule of substrate, restarting the cycle. What I'm going to draw your attention to now that we've drawn the mechanism as a whole is two things. First of all, notice that the mechanism involves six steps in two stages, proton on, a nucleophilic addition step, and proton off, and then proton on, a beta elimination step, and proton off. So this dance of acid catalysis, proton on, the business, and proton off, happens twice within this mechanism. The second thing I want to draw your attention to is this first step, step one, and then step four, where complete or full proton transfer events take place. In other words, full-blown intermediates containing positive charge are formed in this mechanism. Complete proton transfer to the electrophile is referred to as specific acid catalysis. And H3O plus is called a specific acid catalyst because it is the specific acid that is doing this proton transfer event. In other words, it doesn't matter if we use HCl, H2SO4, HI. The acidic reagent we use to catalyze this reaction doesn't matter and does not affect the kinetics because the specific acid that's actually doing the business of proton transfer in this mechanism is H3O+. That's why it's called specific acid catalysis. In the next video, we're going to contrast this with general acid catalysis.